In this video, I'll demonstrate the permissive interlock library object of machine builder libraries. Permissive interlock instruction provides a means of collecting digital signals into a common status which reflects whether or not conditions are suitable to perform a function. When used as permissive, the instruction out OK status is monitored only to start a function. Once the function has started, the status is neglected. In an interlock usage, the instruction out OK status is monitored all the time while the function is active. If any of the interlock condition fails, the function is aborted. The instruction can monitor up to 32 inputs. Each of the input OK state is configurable as on or off. The inputs can be bypassed during maintenance operation. First out capture to identify the first input that failed its OK condition. In this application demo, the permissive interlock instruction is used to monitor the interlock conditions for a stock supply chest application. The interlock instruction is used in unit and equipment modules. Each of the interlock conditions are mapped to the inputs of instruction. The output OK status from the instruction is mapped to the respective modules. In the HMI, this is the navigation object for permissive interlock object. The user has choice to use the navigation object indicating the usage as permissive or interlock. Here in this application, I have used the navigation object for interlock. I'll open the faceplate. There are two faceplate options. The navigation object can be configured to open a quick faceplate or a full faceplate. When using 8 or less inputs, the quick faceplate is suitable. When using more than 8 inputs, the full faceplate can be used. Here you can see this is a quick faceplate as only 8 input status are shown. If needed, user can also launch the full faceplate from this button. As you can see, the difference is only the additional pages to display all the 32 inputs. Back to the quick faceplate. This is the home tab displaying the input status and out OK status. These are the input descriptions. These inputs are disabled. In the settings tab, user can enable the bypass mode. The bypass mode toggle button is enabled when the input maintenance is on. In the configuration tab, these checkboxes is to enable or disable an input. The input description can be modified from the Logix designer. This is the OK state for the inputs, select as 1 or 0. This checkbox is to select if the input is allowed to be bypassed in the settings tab during maintenance. Select this option to enable the first out capture. Select this option if the first out capture is to be reset only using the reset command. For the demo, I have set all the input conditions to their OK state. I'll fail the unit interlock input. You can notice the navigation object is now indicating interlock failed. Also, the input status in the faceplate is showing the failed condition. I'll revert back the input condition. Once the input OK condition is resumed, the OK status is returned. Next we will see the maintenance bypass option. First I will fail the input. To bypass, I have opened the settings tab. The bypass enabled toggle switch is disabled as the maintenance input to the instruction is off. Since I have linked this input with the maintenance of the unit module, I will switch to maintenance control in the unit state model first. Now I am in maintenance mode, so input maintenance is on. The bypass enabled toggle switch is also enabled. You can also notice that only the unit interlock input is allowed to be bypassed. This option is to be selected from the configuration tab which tells which inputs are allowed to be bypassed. I 
I will bypass the input now. You can see the bypass indication and interlock OK status on the navigation button. I will open the home tab to show the input status. On the unit interlock input there are two status being displayed. The input condition failed and the input is bypassed. I will release the maintenance control in the unit. You can see the unit is in idle state and ready for operation. When the interlock condition is ok, the faulted status will disappear. Next I will demonstrate the first out capture. First I will enable the first out capture option in the configuration tab. The first out capture has to be armed using the arm first out input. This indication on the faceplate shows that the first out is armed. I will fail the e-stop input. You can see that as a result of e-stop action there were another two interlock input fails. Since the first out capture is enabled it is easy to understand which input failed first. I will revert back the e-stop input. Next I will enable the option requiring reset command to clear the first out capture. I will fail the e-stop input again. Revert back the e-stop input. You can notice this time the first out capture is not reset. The first out capture can be reset using the p command reset input or the local reset button on the faceplate. Now the first out capture is reset. In this section I will demonstrate how to instantiate permissive interlock object in application code manager. The application code manager already has machine library registered. You need to download the libraries from Rockwell Automation product compatibility and download center page. I have already created a project, added a controller and display. I have also added a program where I will instantiate the permissive interlock library object. To add, right click on the program and select add new. In the filter, enter permissive. Select the permissive interlock library object. Click next. I will name the object instance as unit interlock. The routine name and tag name can be modified as required. Modify the instrument ID and description to be displayed on the faceplate. In these parameters, each bit is represented by an input. Configure the inputs which are enabled. The input OK state and the inputs where the bypass is allowed. Select if the first out capture and first out reset are required. In these parameters, enter the input description to be displayed on the faceplate. The object has callout selection of default, permissive or interlock. I will select interlock. Select the display where the navigation object has to be placed. Click next. Click auto create to create the link libraries. Click finish to complete the instantiation. Now we have added the permissive interlock object. To understand further about generating the code and display, watch the ACM workflow basics video series. For more information, download machine builder libraries from Rockwell Automation website. Thanks for watching the video.